I decided to just go ahead and make this little cheap MOSFET permanent even though it's only a 200 volt fit I ended up needing about 400 oh, about 500 picofarad extra capacitance across the drain and source that little modification kind of uh, tightening up the primary a little bit so it's not really varying around now we've got this specific coupling right here where the primary is just a little bit raised up here so again this is two coils they're about the same length maybe the one below it has maybe a little bit more turns but uh, combined they give me close to around uh, 3 megahertz so what's cool is you know with the way it's tuned now and set up with the uh, passing its tune a little bit and just all the little changes now it uh switches much faster and it looks pretty clean once i get up to uh about 250 watts so i'll cut that on so you can see right now about 25 in a second rise time or so but if i get this going it's about uh 31 volts 100 and 60 watts something like that start cranking it up a little bit so let's see about 38 volts so right about 200 watts or so and that gate waveform kind of shifts around a little and uh, it just ends up being slightly, a little bit slightly stiffer. But you see it's got, you know, a little bit of problem ringing going on. But either way, you know, it starts running about, says about 3 megahertz. So that's not bad. And if I keep bringing that up. So now I've got close to 200 volts on the drain right there. And that's about 250 watts. And so that's that's not bad. But with that little change I made to get it switching a little better, um, now I'm not dealing with a crazy amount of heat developing in that fit. See with it burning that glass though, it's, it gets real violent. It starts going all over the place. Probably should just see how it runs without the glass but uh yeah it's about 260 now so i could probably keep bringing that up maybe go over uh 200 volts on the drain but uh i'll probably end up exploding that damn thing all right i got some more gate drivers here and i've got some acrylic tubes i'm probably going to try to make a pretty good build out of so here goes a couple right here these are the ixdn 614yi drivers i'll have to look that up so these guys are pretty serious gate drivers. Um, if you compare it to a UCC27322 or something like that, it can deliver more peak output current. Um, the supply voltage can go much higher than about 18 volts. And the rise and fall times are pretty similar. Um, so really, this would be like, you know, and it's heat synced, obviously, this package here. So this would be an example to where... I could push some pretty serious damn power out of one of these guys. Uh, probably, you know, with a regular MOSFET would be totally fine. Uh, where I kind of screwed up was buying these guys. So these are 27614 DSGR. When I first looked at those, I guess I was just assuming they'd be larger. So these are 10 amp peak output, single output drivers, 26 volts. They're faster, about four or five nan you know, nanosecond transitions there. Um, so it's a pretty nice looking driver. But it's microscopically damn small. There's no way I'm going to be able to solder that. I mean, that's they are extremely tiny. So that's actually pretty damn impressive. I don't know. Then I got this other one here, IXDD630MCI. So this one was the most expensive at all, of all of them. It's a pretty serious gate driver. Uh, it's got that 220 package. That one's 30 amp output, 9 to 35 volts, about 11 nanosecond transition, not bad, 30 amps. So this is probably going to be the powerhouse for the main beefy circuit I try to build. And maybe I can also kind of see what I can get out of these guys to where I'll just treat them like, you know, two seven three two twos, but they'll be heat synced and I don't have to really worry about them cooking that much. 
Um, likewise, these would probably be good for driving, you know, full bridges, just full bridge SSTCs, things like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know, a lot of possibilities.